Hello, let's talk about color in photography. So I'm going to be introducing you to some really basic concepts around color in photography that hopefully will inspire you to think about how you want to use color for this week's learning unit. So first we've got, we're going to be working with the RGB color wheel, which is a photographic color wheel, which is a little bit different than the painter color wheel. Um, red is opposite of cyan. Yellow is opposite of blue, green is opposite of magenta, and I'm not as familiar with the colors painter wheel, I don't have it memorized, but I, it's different the way that it lines up with what's considered complementary and what's considered analogous. So just something to make a note of when you're working with this week's learning unit is that I want you to always refer back to the RGB photographic color wheel. Um, and it's different because of the way that you print things with CMYK and RGB. Um, and again, like I'm not a color theorist, so I'm just kind of indicating to you that this is the color wheel that I want you to work with for this week's learning unit. So why care about color theory? And again, everything I'm going to talk about is really, is really gravitated towards my ideas around how to use color in your photographs. So color is a visual language. Understanding the com components of this language and how to use color in a photograph is key. Color photographs can stir emotion. Color can influence the viewer in, viewer in subtle, dramatic, or mysterious ways, depending upon how the color is used. So the colors in your photographs can set a mood, attract attention, or make a statement. By selecting a color scheme, you can create an ambience of elegance, warmth, tranquility, fear, excitement, and the list of emotional reactions are limitless. Color is a powerful design element if you learn to use it effectively. So two of the main strategies when you think about color and concept, the first is to use color as a supporting element to amplify a concept that would exist in the photograph without the color. And I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of that. The second strategy is to use color as an integral part of the concept. In this type of work, the photograph would make no sense in black and white. The message would be lost because the color would be absent. So I'm also going to show you some work that is really, um, color is a big key. Color harmony is created when you blend the hues, analogous colors like blue and green, when analogous colors are organized in a photograph, they bring together a sense of balance and combine the elements in the image in a visually unique method. Analogous colors are next to each other on the color wheel. So I'm going to show you a bunch of examples of images that um, have been created thinking about this concept of color harmony. And of course, how we use color is a very personal um, experience, and I want you to be able to reference that in your um, homework. Color contrast is usually created when the opposite hues, complementary colors like blue or yellow, come together in a photograph and they, they accentuate the qualities of each color. So then the col colors actually pop in the image and complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. Hues are separated into two categories. So I'm going to talk about how cold colors and warm colors can have also an impact on your image. Of course, it always depends upon the content as well. Warm colors tend to make the viewer happy, feel more energetic. Cool colors tend to, tend to make the viewer feel more thoughtful or calm or contemplative. If the image that you're making has only blues, then that's gonna be a very significant um, visual suggestion for the viewer. And if you mix colors like red and blue and yellow together, then you're going to have like a, obviously a different read, a different emotional impact. However, colors are highly subjective and associated to your personal experiences and your cultural influences. So the emotional response from specific colors are fascinating to study, and it might be something that you want to continue after this learning unit. So color palette and style. Um, I want you to consider the hue, saturation, luminance of your images for whatever ideas or aesthetics you're trying to convey in your photograph. And of course, the quality of light, the composition and design, the white balance, the time of day, 
the difference between kind of making a home studio or working on location are also going to impact um, what you can create. So next slide. Oops. So the first thing I want to really kind of introduce is hue, saturation, and luminance. And so hue is going to be the name of the color. Um, how that color comes together in the photograph, uh, what colors you use. And so hue is really just being able to name the color. But hue is also the foundation for this idea of how a color can look different if it's saturated or desaturated. So here's another example of looking at an image that's primarily yellow. This is the work of Elgar Esser, and he's one of the photographers that I'll be referencing. And if you chose to look at his work, you would see that most of his work has a very specific color palette. They're almost monochromatic in the way that he uses color. And he's simply doing that through his choices of what he's photographing, the time of day, and then of course a little bit of post-production. But a lot of the information is already in the base of the photograph. The other concept that we're looking at is saturation, which is the vividness or the purity of the hue. And it sort of describes the depth or the intensity. And so here we have kind of a painting of something of basically the same thing, but you have the desaturated uh, version and the saturated version. And so again, just like how you quickly visually respond to these two image, these two paintings, this one is very vivid and almost loud if you were to um, want to compare it to like a, a music. And then the desaturated image is much more quiet and calming. So those are some things that is fun to take into consideration. So saturation, uh, the vividness or purity of the hue, this is an artist, Martin Parr. He's a British photographer. And most of his work is highly saturated, as you can see here. And that's due to the type of film that he's using. And again, a little bit of his kind of post-production, how he's printing. And if you start to notice with his work, not only is it very saturated, but there's a very specific theme of how he's looking at people, culture, and trying to kind of have an irony and a sense of humor with that. So his work is a good example for someone that if you wanted to learn more about how to amplify um, the colors that are in the image and what to take pictures of. So he's a really great photographer to look at, to get inspired, whoops, sorry, um, about how to use color in a very dramatic way. There's a couple of videos that you'll watch if you chose to learn more about him that will indicate, A, he's very prolific and a very funny man, um, but his interest in people and color. Another photographer that really uses this idea of saturation is Pete Turner. And um, he, again, is really using these vibrant colors. Um, which makes his compositions more dramatic and engaging. And he's someone, again, who is, you know, this is pre-Photoshop. This photograph is from 1958. And most of his work was created using Kodachrome. And um, the beginnings of when color photographs were being created. This is a great example of not only a vibrant, saturated, photograph, but also minimum depth of field. So the only thing that's really in focus in this picture is this grate, right? Um, one of the, that would take you down underneath the city. Everything else is kind of out of focus. It's also a good example of time of day. So this was probably shot like either after the sun has set or most likely very early in the morning since it's Times Square. So thinking about how you're using the quality of light can also have a big impact on the saturation in your photos. Because the sun and the quality of light um, can really make the colors seem even more dramatic. Whereas if you photograph on a cloudy day, then you're gonna have images that might have a little bit more of a desaturated lighting quality to them. 
This is another photo by Peter Turner. So he's a good photographer if you want to learn more about, you know, these kind of ways of looking at everyday life objects through the lens of a very specific aesthetic. And he's also, oh, there's um, going to be some videos where you can learn more about him as well. So on the opposite end of this concept of saturation and desaturation, we have the work of Oliver Boberg, who's a German photographer who these are actually um, totally small setups, right? So he's created this entire environment. This is not an actual parking lot or walkway. This is um, all cut out of paper, lit in his studio. Um, there's absolutely nothing real in this photograph. It's a diorama, so it's like a little set that he's built in his studio and then re-photographs. And his elimination of color, so the color is not vivid, and he's deliberately trying to have these images that are very desaturated, is a part of his creative process. And so he wants the lack of color. He doesn't want to have um, intense colors. And again, remember, these are dioramas so they're little sets that he creates in his studio and there's he's a very interesting artist who has created these dioramas looking at different parts of the world and um, he did a whole series on slum so this is uh, the series that what an image from that series so if you want to learn more about a photographer who's who primarily works in his studio and works with desaturation, he might be an, a photographer that you'd want to learn about. So then the third, we talked about hue, saturation, and now we're moving on to luminance. And luminance is the lightness or darkness of the colors or the tones in the photograph. And I'm also going to introduce high key and low key because that has a lot of effect on this concept of luminance. So this um, style of photographing oftentimes is very affected by the type of lighting um, and the exposure to convey the atmosphere or the mood in the images. So this is the work of Joyce Tennyson and her work is high key. Um, she uses a lot of light, probably also kind of overexposes her images. So we're really focusing on, so she's using lighter colors. So that's part of it, like choosing different colors that will help accentuate whatever the visual aesthetic is that you're interested in. And if you look up her work, you're going to find that she doesn't only do high key photographs, but she does a lot of high key, but most of her work is very specific. It's either high key or low key. These are also 30 by 40, 20 by 24 Polaroids. So um, you can kind of see the evidence of this, but they have cameras where they produce 20 by 24 Polaroids. It's a huge camera. It's almost the size of a small car. And it allows you to, like with a small Instamatic Polaroid camera, make these huge Polaroid shots. And they're special because they're one of a kind, right? So as a photographer, when you work in this medium of a Polaroid, you, you add some additional value to your images. I think some of her images have been also turned into prints from Polaroids, but it is a unique way to work. And this is just, um, you know, more of her work exploring like the lighter side of this concept of luminance, uh, a term called high key. And it really does show the brightness and it usually doesn't contain very many shadows. And you can see here how she's lit the subject from behind and from the front. So we're seeing the, the wings having those highlights that pop out. So lighting is a big key element of um, these ideas of color and how the color translates depending upon the type of lighting that you're using. Here's another example of her work. So if you want to learn more about her work is very poetic and um, visually intriguing uh, on a kind of a almost a ethereal a a ethereal visual perspective she's a great person to look at 
On the opposite spectrum of the high key is low key. So low key images are oftentimes on the very dark end of the tonal scale and they oftentimes are even the highlights. So here, this is the work of Miguel Rio Bronco and he is exposing for the highlights, but even with that, he's kind of under exposing the highlights. So he's making the highlights very rich in tone and the shadows are then turning to black. And if you look at his work, most of his work is really in this particular vein of low key where the lighting and the tone and the exposure, because it's almost like, you know, he's just exposing for the brightest spot of this picture and then everything else is going really dark. And a lot of photographers lean heavily on these, these kind of visual aesthetics for their photographs being either high key or low key. And with the low key um, visual perspective, I think it gives you a sense of drama or mystery. And he's someone who's really interested in creating um, a very dramatic and almost theatrical feeling to his images. If you chose to um, watch any of the videos and learn more about his creative process. So I just really love this image, how it's exposed for the outside, but you still see these other people. And just thinking about that concept and compositional style of frame within a frame and rule of thirds that are very much being explored in this image. Oh, I love this shot too. And this is a quote by Miguel Rigo Bronco. Um, I want to transform reality into a poetic statement. And you know, this is, some people would say this picture is dramatically underexposed because even the highlights are pretty dark. But I love how it's using photography more as a painterly, using the light almost like as a paintbrush, right? Using the light and the exposure and the tonal quality to create these very specific types of imagery that then you connect to this photographer. So creating that personal style. So let's talk a little bit about warm and cool colors. So um, the RGB, the photographic RGB color wheel can be divided into warm and cool. Uh, the warm colors oftentimes are more vivid and energetic and, and, and the cooler colors are gonna be more calm. And so here I just found an image by David LaChapelle who I'll talk about in a minute, who's you know doing an ad for, um, I guess this is Smirnoff Vodka and there's like a cool theme and then a warm theme. And so you can just see the difference between the two images and how they evoke something slightly different, even though there's a lot of common things, same model, similar type of dress. Of course, the background and the imagery in the background is different, but you have, there's an elegance here and there's kind of an icy feeling here, which is what, of course, they're trying to communicate because this is for an advertisement. So now I'm just gonna go through a bunch of different photographs by some of the photographers that I'd like for you to learn about and just kind of try to put them into some categories. So this is the work of Gregory Crutzen. He's looking at analogous colors. So we've got a kind of a blue and green theme, but then he's thrown in a little bit of hints of magenta, but everything here is really desaturated. And to me, there's a lot of color harmony, even though his imagery is really, um, psychologically strange and there's like kind of questions about what are these two girls doing and what's really going on you've got this you know fog and everything is very dramatic and this is a setup photograph but still it's got those the theme of color harmony and desaturation this is another image by gregory Crutzen. again analogous colors green and blue a lot of color harmony there's nothing really standing out very significant not a lot of color contrast, and it kind of has a drab feeling to it. Some people would say his work is very depressing. I think his work is psychologically fascinating. This is the work of Ada Kim, um, who's also looking at analogous colors, just so happens to be green and blue again. And he does these long exposures during the day. So this is a eight hour long exposure. I mean, I don't, I can't say it's during the day. I don't know exactly what time it could be. Um, a night photograph um, because you can turn night into day when you have an eight hour long exposure. 
but again, still very desaturated um, use of color. Another piece by um, Atta Kim, another eight hour long exposure. Um, I'm not sure exactly where this is. I think it's somewhere in London. Still the analogous colors where it's focusing on green and blue, a color harmony because of that, which is little specks of color. This is the work by David LaChapelle, and most of his work is this really high color contrast with lots of saturation. And here you have some complementary colors happening where the blue of the water with the yellow of the dress, the blue of the sky, so there's a lot of blue, and then the pop of the yellow, and then the magenta and yellow would be considered analogous. So there's like this common um, connection between these two colors opposing the vibrancy of the blue. Another image by David LaChapelle from 2002. And this is a good example of when we were talking about like, it, you could make this into, so it's a red Coke can with a blue sky, which kind of accentuates the red blood. The image would still have a tremendous amount of impact if this was like a 7-Up can. Um, but I think by it being a Coke can, then you have this connection of the color red. So lots of color contrast and saturation here. Another image in a different direction by David LaChapelle from 2018. So, and this is um, Lady Gaga. We've got a little bit of color harmony going on here where we're just looking at yellow and magenta, um, which are analogous colors. And um, there's a lot of magenta, so we're working with um, almost a monochromatic image with color, not black and white. Um, and it's very saturated nonetheless. And another shot by David LaChapelle. Excuse me, so this is a combination of warm and cool colors. So it's interesting, all the, and this is, this is also a diorama, something set up in the studio. So you've got all this green kind of on the outside, and then inside you have the warm colors. Um, so there's that, a lot of contrast here and a lot of saturation. Moving on to um, color harmony and kind of looking at desaturation, and this is the work of um, Bridget Carnegie, who does these, so this is actually um, a hand-painted Jet black and white print. So she's adding the color because it's a black and white print that she's painting on. And so she's choosing the colors, sometimes to represent, you know, the green of the ivy, but she's choosing them to be very harmonious and very desaturated. So there's a lightness and again, kind of an ethereal quality to her images. Moving on to Melanie Polin, who's a photographer who's more interested in color contrast and saturation. And she's someone who, um, if you choose to watch some of the videos about her, she's interested in recreating these murder scenes that she researches and learns about and then um, does this kind of like high fashion crime photographs. But she's also very interested in color so you've got the green of the grass and then the pop of the yellow. Even though they're not complementary colors, they're still not analogous. Um, yellow and green are not directly opposite on the, on the RGB color wheel, but they do create a certain amount of contrast. And another photograph by her. So a longer exposure with the car lights through the middle and then it's a very cool color for the most part. The photograph is a lot of cool, but some warmth coming from the inside of the car and this building in the background, which kind of creates some sort of connection. So here's some examples of exploring color in photography. So um, we've got a beautiful landscape shot. Again, the time of day is really having a, a big impact on the saturation of the colors and a little bit of post-production. Similar with this image, this is a long exposure. You can see by the few star trails that are showing up, so it might be a couple of minutes. And again, a little bit of post-production. Looks like they had their car lights on, so they're also illuminating part of this field. So we're just creating 
um, a very saturated uh, color palette. Also here, the time of day, um, you know, when the sun is directly above, you can kind of see how the highlights are reflecting off the car and the use of color. Again, lots of contrast with the blue, green, and yellow that's kind of reflecting around throughout this photo. Here's a good example of using analogous colors with a dominant color of being blue, with just a little bit of green in the water. And it's a little bit, it's not quite incredibly desaturated, but it's also not saturated. So again, like the lighting is having a big impact on that. Um, using dominant colors with the cool, so we've got blues with a little bit of purple. It's a great example of a low key image because of the lighting and the exposure. Another example of a low key image and really interesting looking at the way that the building is lit up with these greens and blues. So here we have analogous colors of kind of red, yellow, yet low key lighting very saturated due to the exposure and a little bit of post-production. Here's a very warm example of um, warm colors, the red and yellow. Um, it's not desaturated because of the colors, but the lighting is soft. So it's probably open shade. Um, so there's just like this kind of calm softness to this image to me, even though it's these vi vibrant colors. So depending upon the lighting will really have a big impact on how the colors come across in your image. Here we have more dramatic lighting. Um, so there, it creates a little bit more of a saturated feel to the colors. Um, there's a coolness to this photo. There's a warmth to this photo. Not only the colors are warm, but the light is very soft. And so it's just got this kind of, again, like a slightly desaturated use of this color palette. Here we have a very saturated use of a similar color palette, but we've thrown in the magenta, right? So a lot of analogous colors here with the magenta, orange, and yellow. I forgot to write this one out. Uh, complementary colors, the yellow and blue. Also good use of, of you know, a little bit of rule of thirds. Also the complementary colors of red and cyan. More complementary colors with the high saturation of the yellow and blue. And here, this is another interesting one where clearly it's backlit. You can see the highlights behind the model. It's predominantly yellow, so that's the dominant color. Um, and it, it's, I think it's a pretty good example of, of a saturated, well, an image that lands in the middle. So we're just thinking about the visual interest, uh, you know, so how you're using the color and the composition and the subject matter, thinking about your concepts, so what you want to meet, what the meaning you might want to come across, and then of course, like, how do you want the viewer to have an emotional response to the colors that you're using? So I hope this was inspirational and helpful. Thanks.